Good morning, everyone. It is me, Chantel, recording live from Breakers Covenant Church International under the leadership of Aramis and Rosanna Hines. God bless you this morning. Um, today, I'll be doing a Sunday recap from yesterday's message, Jesus, the Great Equalizer. Um, and I'm going to start with a word of prayer, and then I'm going to jump straight into the word. Amen. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you. We bless you, God. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Truly, there is no one like you in all of this earth. And so we worship you. Hallelujah. Who shall ascend your heel, Father? You said those who have uh, pure hearts and clean hands, oh God. Hallelujah. So we thank you, oh Father. We ask that you search us and reveal to us anything in us that's not like you, Father. That we may worship you, God. That we may ascend your heel, God. That we may become all, oh Father, that you have called for us to be. I thank you right now, God, for our lead servants, God, the Aramis and Rosanna Hines. Thank you for their lives, God. Thank you for their sacrifice. Thank you for their servitude, God. Thank you, hallelujah, for blessing us with such great leaders, such humble leaders, oh God. And I just pray that you stay with them, oh God. I thank you, oh God, that you're dealing with them, oh God, in the most relevant areas, God. I thank you, hallelujah, you're providing every need. God, you're making every crooked place straight. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, we speak a blessing over them, oh God. Continue to be all that you are in their lives and more. Hallelujah, we thank you. For your people, I thank you for your people who opened up their ears this morning to hear your word. Lord, I pray, hallelujah, God, that they will receive everything, God, that you have for them through uh, this devotional, God, through this word, oh, Father. Anything in it, oh, God, that is for them. God, I pray that their hearts be open to hear it, Lord God, and they will be able to apply it, God, and to continue to live forward in you, God. I thank you. I bless your holy name. There's no one like you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah and amen. Praise God, everyone. Praise God. Once again, I am here um, with a recap from yesterday's message preached by Pastor Kwame, our assistant pastor. Um, the title of the message was Jesus, the Great Equalizer. Jesus, the Great Equalizer. Good morning, Brother Demetrius. Good morning, Brother Ken. Um, so there's, um, one particular, um, point, major point that really, um, um, was the heart of, uh, the message in Jesus, the great equalizer. And I want to read, um, a little from this text and then I'll expound upon that point that God has us in this vein that God has us in as in regards to unity and fellowship, amen, seeing one another through the eyes of God, all right, so 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're going to start at verse 11, and it says, because we understand our fearful responsibility to the Lord, we work hard to persuade others, God knows we are sincere, and I hope you know this too, are we commending ourselves to you again, no, we are giving you a reason to be proud of us. So you can answer those who brag about having a spectacular ministry rather than having a sincere heart. If it seems we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. And if we are in our right minds, it is for your benefit. Either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive this new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view, how differently we know him now. This means that everyone, anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has began. Amen. Praise God. So once again, um, the point here is seeing one another through the eyes of God. In the King James Version, this text says, no, no man after the flesh. And what the message was um, exhorting us in is to be careful um, 
being born again, how we see another person, how we evaluate, how we determine a person's worth, how we determine a person's position, how we determine um, who a person is and what a person is. We have to be sure that we are seeing through the eyes of God, that we are humbling ourselves to see what it is that uh, God says about a particular individual. Look, what God says about us, we can't allow our position in life to determine someone's position in the Lord. I'm going to say that again. We can't allow our position in life or someone else's position in life. And when I say position in life, I'm speaking of profession. I'm speaking of skin color. I'm speaking of gender. I'm speaking of um, a certain denomination, um, a certain demographic, a certain um, tax bracket. You know, all these different worldly evaluations that when you fill out a typical form, when you fill out um, any type of survey or something it, it moves you to or it asks you to pretty much identify yourself so they can put you in a certain class well this is not how it works in the kingdom first of all as far as jesus being an equalizer we are all equal in value all right christ does not love one person more than he loves another he did not die for more if we didn't die more um, on behalf of these people and not behalf of those people. As we read in the scripture, he died for all. He died once and he died for all. And us as believers, we must remember that he died for everybody, even those who haven't even received him yet. He still died for them and we are still charged to see them through the eyes of God. We are still charged to uh, humble ourselves, not to think more highly of ourselves um, than we should. We are called to not evaluate, not to determine a person's place or value based on what they have or what they don't have. We can't even do it for ourselves. We can't, we can't determine, oh, I'm in this place with God or that place with God because I have X, Y, and Z. No, the scripture admonishes us um, to have a healthy evaluation, have an honest evaluation of yourself as well. You know, so, you know, one of the points that he brought up was, you know, he, he referenced the Constitution of America and, and different, um, uh, you know, written uh, ways in different democracies and different countries in their best effort to try to equalize people and in their effort to try to bring equalization to the people to make sure everything was fair and laid out it ended up still producing this malalignment when it comes to value this malalignment when it comes to um who's who and what's what in their best effort to try to equalize things it still caused corruption it still caused division. It still caused a breakdown in society. And so we as people, we as believers cannot use worldly systems or worldly documents to determine how we will see, how we will respond to, how we will minister to, how we will interpret one another. We can't do it because in our best effort, we mess stuff up. If you look at the scriptures, it's been this way since the beginning of time all the way to now. When we put our little hands on stuff, we mess it up. When we decide we're going to come to a conclusion about something, we're going to mess it up. And people's best efforts, the things that are heralded, the things that are praised, the things that, are, that have memorials attached to them, in their best effort to bring equality, it caused division cause division because it is the spirit of the Lord that will bring the wisdom that is needed to um, apply uh, what needs to be applied to bring um, a healthy balance to things. Um, Jesus, he, he brings the high here and he brings the low here. Like when he looks at us, he's not looking at um, how great we are in the eyes of men. He's not looking at all the things we've obtained and all of those things. And I have to, you know, think about myself when I'm even saying this because it's like 
you know, I remember it was definitely a point in time in my life where I was like comparing myself and determining my worth and my value and um, even my, you know, level of, you know, influence or what I could or could not do. And it was all based on what I did have or what I didn't have. It was based off where I came from. It was based off my gender. It was just so many things I was comparing um, to others and with others. And even though I was diminishing myself and my own value, I was also esteeming and putting people in a higher place. And neither one of those were of God. Neither one. Neither one of those of God. I remember God woke me up one morning and told me, don't be a selfie. And I was so confused. I'm like, what do you mean don't be a selfie? You know, and we know selfies are pictures that you take of yourself with a cell phone. And you, you know, line up the camera right and you show exactly what you want to show. And if you take a picture that shows something you don't want it to show, you get to crop it and you get to do all these other things to it. And God said, don't be a selfie. Number one, the main point here that relates to this in regards to the selfie is don't see yourself. Don't have this view of yourself and then cast it off as truth. You, you can't use these humanistic things, these carnal ways, these carnal things, carnal accomplishments, all of these things to determine where you really are. And guess what? We can't determine where someone else is based on those things either. The scripture says, we, so we stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. In other words, anything that is not human, right? It has to be God, right? So we, we got to go into the spirit realm. I'm talking as believers because anything that's human, that's carnal, that's fleshly, so we have to step into another realm of the spirit. We have to step into the spirit in order to see as God sees. We have to step into the spirit in order to interpret the way God inter interprets. All right. We cannot rely on our finite minds and our finite understandings to determine a matter. It can look like one thing. As our pastor would say, it's not what it look like. It's what it is. It's what it is. And the truth is. In Christ's eyes, he died for all of us. He interceded for you just like he interceded for me. His blood was shed for me just like it was shed for you. And if I'm born again because I've received the message of the gospel and turned my life over to Christ, then so is the next person who did the same thing. We cannot determine. We cannot use the worldly values, the worldly systems, the worldly accomplishments to determine who we are in Christ. That's not how Christ functioned. There was, it was referenced about the tax collector and the Pharisee. You know, the Pharisee feeling like he's in a more important, better place than the tax collector. And they both come in, they both talk to God, but the posture of the hearts were totally different. One was of superiority and the other one was of humility. And God gives grace to those who come in and humble with an honest evaluation of themselves. And he rejects those who think they're better than. He rejects those who feels puffed up, who feels like they're in a better place than, than another person based off, especially off carnal means. You know, so, you know, in that case, there was no, you don't get brownie points from God because you, you look down on another or you call out another person's flaws or you call out another person's um, insufficiencies. You don't get brownie points for that. Amen. God always charges us to reflect on our own selves. When we come before God, it should even be about no one else and what someone else did or did not do. This is more about us living uh, in, a, in a way that pleases God. Us allowing Holy Spirit uh, when we step into his presence, when we go before him to search us deeply. Hallelujah. To search us of things that, that are not like him, like pride. Things that, that, that may get past us. Things we may have thought and said that we were not connected to or that we don't may not even remember. When we go before the Lord, it is not to attack someone else. It is not to call out how good we think we are. You know, None of that even matters and God will resist us when we come before him with a haughty spirit, with a haughty attitude. We have no audience with God. We have no audience with God. 
All right, we must go before him humbly that we may receive, receive grace to move forward, that we may receive uh, re forgiveness for whatever sins or whatever ways we've had in our attitude or in our deeds or in our words that did not please him. Jesus is not looking at our outward appearance. Jesus is not looking at uh, what we uh, accomplish and what we did not accomplish. That's not how he determines where he can put his love. That's not how he determined who who gets to, to be called and who, who gets to be chosen of him. That's not how he determines things. He always judges the heart. And we can't judge the heart unless we have God's eyes. Because even what we see will still be erroneous. Because we do not have the eyes or the heart of God to even interpret interpret what we see appropriately. And so the, the, the encouragement here is that no, no man after the flesh. We've been born again. We've been born again. And we have a charge to see others through the eyes of God. We have a charge. When we do things like this, we won't be in cliques. When we do things like this, we won't isolate. You know, it's, it's the one extreme. Either we flock to people or we flock away from people. Neither one of them are fruit of the spirit. You know, like fruit of the spirit life, fruit of God's life working and active in you. All right. We want to continue to grow in unity and in fellowship. And we won't be able to do that if our eyes are off. If our interpretations are off. God wants to continue to purge our eyes and purge our hearts of the things that causes divisive fellowship. That causes superficial fellowship that we may come together in unity and, and fellowship for real hallelujah and like it was in acts people will continue to be added to the body every day because of what we exemplify because of what we demonstrate in authenticity we all love christ christ loved us all he died for us all we all received him and that is the spirit that is the the welcoming presence that would draw people to him when it's not the big eyes and the little use when it's not the haves and the have nots so may god deal with our hearts wherever we may find ourselves whatever frequency we've been functioning in however we've been seeing a person however we've not been seeing a person may god bring balance Hallelujah to our view. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. I thank you, God, for your word. God, I thank you, O oh God, for your chastisement. I thank you, God, for your ability to bring us uh, into a common ground. It is your spirit that unifies us, oh God. So we humble ourselves, oh God, to your spirit. We submit to your authority. God, in the name of Jesus, we won't have our own way. We don't want to have our own way. We don't want to see our own way. We don't want our own past experiences to determine how we'll move forward, oh Father. But we want to be in the spirit. We want to do things your way. We want to see things your way. Hallelujah. We want to love people your way. We want to love ourselves your way, oh God, in a healthy way, God. We don't want to be overly indulged into ourselves, God, and we don't want to overly disengage the lives of others, God. Help us, oh God. Thank you for dying for us all, God. And thank you for your spirit that is present with us to help us, God, to bind one, one to another in a spirit of unity and a bond of peace and in the spirit of love. God, it's your spirit that is able to do these things in and through us and among us that we may continue to be productive as your body. Hallelujah. Thank you for washing behind our eyes, oh God, to see as you see. Thank you, God, for cleansing our hearts, oh God, of any wickedness, any unforgiveness, bitterness, and, and inferiority, superiority, pride, arrogance, all of the things that causes uh, these different perspectives, uh, these, uh, these unrealistic evaluations, all these unrealistic conclusions that we come to because ultimately God we're in our flesh we repent of every way that is not of your way God and we receive your life on today hallelujah thank you father for progressing us day by day hallelujah to work this thing out to work out our own soul salvation with fear and trembling in the name of Jesus 
May we continue to grow in this aspect of unity and fellowship. May we continue, Father, to allow you to purge our eyes. Hallelujah. All the things we've seen and known. All the things that will cause divisiveness. And all the things that will cause, hallelujah, uh, contention and strife in the midst of the fellowship of one another. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, God. I bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah and amen. God bless you, everyone. If you could feel free to watch yesterday's service, it is on our Facebook page. It is also on our YouTube channel. And please tune back in with us at 6 p.m. for another worship watch from Apostle Edwin Lindsay. God bless you and thank you for tuning in.